Hi. So here is the second part of my network restructure series. This is my current network. And you can see the simple port based VLAN structure. The switch is effectively broken up into three parts, which operate like three separate switches. The top row of ports are configured as one VLAN, which has all the internal devices on it. The left hand of the bottom row is configured as the DMZ and that has all the untrusted devices on it and the right hand end of the bottom row is spare. It's a very simple network but it's limited in its security. Now here's the target network. It's based on 802.1q VLANs and this is what I want to migrate to. The challenge I have is to migrate causing as little disruption as possible, and preferably none. People are working from home five days a week, and there are other commitments at the weekend, so I don't have the flexibility of taking the whole thing down for a week or so, sorting it all out, bringing it up again when I've finished. So I need to find a way of reconfiguring the network while it's running with minimal impact. One of the benefits of using VLANs in Linux is that I can add the VLANs to existing network interfaces and any untagged traffic will continue to be handled by the base interface. So here's a simplified mock-up of my network and my firewall. At the moment, it's configured as a port-based VLAN. That means these four ports are just separated out as their own little mini switch and traffic can flow between the devices that are connected in these four ports. And Traffic can't go to any of the other ports, and none of the other ports' traffic can come to these. It's like a little mini switch on its own. All the packets on this network are all untagged. So when I convert this over to an 802.1q tagged VLAN, it needs to look exactly the same to all the other servers on the network. So let's see what that looks like. So I've created a VLAN, a tagged VLAN of ID2. And you'll see here, each of the ports is defined as being untagged. So what will happen is that when data comes in from the camera server, the switch will recognize it as belonging to VLAN2. It will come in untagged. It will add a tag to it, work out where it needs to send it, and then before it sends it out, because it's defined, all the other ports are defined as untagged, it will send it out as untagged. So all of the devices attached to the network will all continue to see untagged traffic. But the switch is internally assigning ID of two and switching it across the four ports. So the operation is exactly the same as it is at present. Now that's, that's where the magic happens. Now watch what happens when we create the additional VLANs. Right. So what I've done here is I've created two new tagged VLANs underneath this base Ethernet port from the DMZ side. And then I've created three new VLANs, 30, 40, and 60, underneath the LAN side. Now the, the base operation of the default of these base ports still remains the same, processing untagged traffic. And then tagged messages that come, tagged packets that come down, if they've got a matching tag, will be processed by the handler for these VLAN ports. So what happens here then is I've added onto this definition in the switch that this is now VLAN 20 and it's a tagged definition. So what happens is when I've got traffic for VLAN 2 coming from one of these servers, it sends it untagged down the wire and it gets picked up by the base port. But when there's traffic for VLAN 20, it tags it and sends it down the wire. And that then gets picked up by the handler for VLAN 20. So what that means then is that the existing traffic travels 
unchanged, gets processed unchanged. It's only the new traffic on the new VLANs that gets picked up by the new handlers. So let's see what happens. Let's, let's see the next change. Right. So now this is the first change I'm going to be making when I actually move the Plex server onto its new VLAN. So I've changed this port from being VLAN 2. This is now VLAN 20 and it's untagged. So any traffic that comes from the Plex server will come in untagged. The switch assigns it an ID of 20. And then the only other port that's associated with 20 is this one. So the packets pass across. This one is a tagged port. So it sends it down here with a tag and they get picked up by this process of VLAN 20. And then when the messages go back, they come back because it's come from this handler comes out with a tag on it, comes up here. The switch picks it up as VLAN 20 because it's tagged, passes it across to here, says, right, this is an untagged device, but it's on VLAN 20. So it sends it down here untagged. So the Plex server has now switched VLANs and it's completely unaware of it. And that's the basis of what I'm doing and how I'm going to be able to move each of the different segments across one by one without having a big outage. So now you know how I'm going to achieve it. This is the actual plan of what I'm going to do to convert the network. Step 1A is to convert the switch from port VLANs to 802.1Q tagged VLANs. Now I've done this in red because this is where I'm going to cause an outage when it's happening. The next one, 1B, add VLANs to the PFSense firewall. I can do that without an outage. And then the next one, technically this one should be in red because it does cause an outage. Migrate the Plex server across to VLAN 20. But as the usage of that is relatively low, I'm happy to take that hit while that's happening. So step two, move the camera server to the PoE switch and remove the guest LAN. So there'll be an outage in the guest LAN then, but no one's using that for a little while. So that'll be okay. And nearly everybody's using the internal LAN anyway, so that's not a problem. Um, then I've got step three. Now we start converting the inter inside of the house. Convert the loft router to use the VLANs. And that will switch across to VLAN 30 and VLAN 10. And then convert the shared router to VLANs and isolate the backup server. Again, that will cause an outage as I'm switching it over, but I'll be building the, the router uh, beforehand. So there's only a short outage while I actually do that. Plus, I've got no people working from home or anything out in the shed. Um, and then the other one is isolate the backup server. So that will move on to its new network. But again, nobody uses that. That's used for, that's copying stuff to itself to back stuff up. So that won't cause an outage. And then five. This is, starts to get dangerous now. Convert the lounge router to VLANs and that will impact the television and the PS5 and the other things in that room. Now, when I'm converting these, once I do this first conversion here, converting the loft router, that will segregate uh, the traffic on the IoT network. It will lose access to the IoT devices that are on the LAN network. So I need to keep these relatively close together, but typically nobody is using the loft router is, com is connecting to anything that's, most of the IoT devices are all downstairs. So that shouldn't be a problem. The lounge is when it's gonna get tricky. So six, and this is the big one then. Right. So this is again is in red. Convert the kitchen router to VLANs. That's going to have an outage because that's where most of the computers are, all the working from home devices. Move the NAS 
across to the VLAN. That will cause an outage and move the printer to the VLAN. That one's going to be very much like moving the Plex server that we've just seen. So I'm not expecting that's going to be much, much of a problem, but it is going to be an outage. And then step seven, which I'm not sure if I'm going to do or not, but it's definitely going to be a later step. Convert the PFSense links to a lag group. So I've got two separate connections going up to the PFSense server from the switch with different VLANs on each one. I've got three connections, if you see from the pictures, um, with a different connection, um, different LANs going on each one. And what I'm thinking that I'll do is I may aggregate these two, the LAN and OPT1, into a single um, lag unit. So, so they share their traffic across it, but that's probably for a future state and that will cause an outage while I'm doing that. So that's the plan. Um, and over the next few weeks, as I do this work, I'll publish these videos and you can see the different steps as we go through the different configuration of the routers. Um, Hopefully I'll be able to share some of the config between them. I've got some routers that I'm going to be using for it. Um, installing uh, OpenWRT. And uh, yeah, hopefully it won't be, hopefully I won't have any outages. So let's crack on and do steps 1A, 1B and 1C. Let's log into the switch and change the VLAN over from port based to 802.1q now i'm going to try and do this transparently so this is the ports on the front of the switch and the numbers that they've got now you can see here currently i've got in vlan 1 13579 so that's this whole top row as you saw from the diagram that's currently port based so there's no tags or anything it's just these have just been physically grouped into one like what like one mini switch is at the top here and then down the bottom two four six eight ten twelve so they constitute oh, another logical grouping so that's like another switch separate that's vlan 2 and then here we've got the third vlan which i'm not using which is 14, 16, 18, 20, 22. So basically I've divided my switch up into three groups, one, one along the top with uh, 12 ports in, um, and then two at, two, at, two at the bottom, one with each with six ports in. So that's the, that's the plan. So what I'm going to do is now convert these into tag, into a, an ASOQ.1Q uh, VLAN, but the, all of these ports I will have untagged uh, on income incoming and I'll assign them a de default VLAN ID of one so there'll be VLAN ID one within the pitch it within the pitch within the port no within the switch and uh, then they will um, remove the tags and send them out um, as if they'd been part of the uh, uh, so they're untagged again so they'll only be tagged while they're actually in the switch right so let's do that switch this now okay give me that a minute all right all right there we go so that's got one vlan that's got everything in it again so let's add in add new vlan vlan 2 that's going to have ports two so you click it click it once and it makes it tagged so if it's blank it's not a member if you click it once it's t it means it's tagged click it twice it's untagged and you go around blank again so click 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 one two three four five six so two four six eight ten twelve that's right apply Add another VLAN. 
Elan 3. That's going to be 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. Apply. Right. Now I need to remove these ones, all the evens, which is all the bottom row, all the evens on the bottom row. So this top one, VLAN 1, is just going to have the odd ones on the top row. Click, 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 click. Okay, and apply. Yeah. Okay. Right, okay, so that needs, I need to change the port VLAN ID for these before I can remove them. So two is going to be port two, four, six, eight, ten, and twelve are port two. And uh, sorry, VLAN ID two, and then fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, and twenty-four are going to be VLAN three. So. VLAN 2, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. VLAN 3, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. Right, let's apply that. Okay, now let's see if I can remove these. Okay, so that should be it. I've now changed, so all of these ones are all VLAN 1, untagged. VLAN 2 is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, all untagged. VLAN 3 is 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, all untagged. And that's the default port VLAN ID. Okay, so the switch is now converted over to be 802.1Q VLAN. Now I can go through the other steps, slowly changing one port after another um, to uh, to be the, the new port numbers that I've got, the, the, the double digit ones. Okay, let's log out and get on to the next step. So step two. Time to start phase two now, and that's to add all the VLANs into PFSense. So I've logged in. Now I select interfaces and assignments. And I come across here to VLANs. And add. So I'll start with the bottom. Let's go here, just to remind me. So VLAN 10 is going to be on OPT1. And that's going to be... Okay, so I've got the names wrong here. That's actually OPT4. The interface is a 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's OPT4. So VLAN 10. And that is going to be IOT. Oh, IOT outward. Save. Okay, let's add another one. VLAN 20, which is going to be also. Make sure you change the thing again because it's default to the, to the uh, first one. VLAN 20, and that is going to be IOT inward. So that's for devices that can come, for things that can be accessed from the internet. Save. And let's do 30. Let's change the interface. So that's going to be 
the existing LAN interface, 30, and there's going to be uh, well, LAN again, so that's the internal LAN. Happened there. Okay, I must have saved it, didn't update. Okay, and then you want. Right, so I've added all these VLANs. They're not in use yet. I've got to get, got to activate them now. And to here, I come across to interface assignments, and then I have to add them all. So. VLAN 10, add, and then it, it doesn't appear there, uh, VLAN 20, VLAN 30, you just click them as they appear and just creates them, okay, 50, 60, right, so that's it, that's all the interfaces created, let's save that, so now I need to go in and configure them. So let's go in VLAN 10. You have to enable it. Um, and this is going to have static IP. And I'm going to give this IP address 192.0. 168.10.1 That's going to be a 24 and no upstream gateway, that's it internal reference so that's it, save now is when it starts to affect actual traffic so this is asking to apply changes so it will apply changes I should have changed the name for this. So this is um, 10 IOT outward. So there again. Okay. Back to interfaces. So that's now IoT outward, VLAN 10. So VLAN 20. We'll enable it. That's IoT inward. Static. 192.168.20.1. All exactly the same. Oops. Twenty four save apply. Let's get rid of that. Okay, that's all the new interfaces created. Now I need to go in and set up DHCP for them. So here they all are. This is the existing LAN one. So I'm going to copy this pretty much. Um, and give it its own DNS server. I don't need any of these static stuff there. Okay, IoT outbound. So enable DHCP. Hello, all clients. Deny nobody. Range, and I'm going to go from 192.168.64. Where? 
sorry, dot ten dot sixty four to one and two dot one six eight dot ten dot one oh one. What's that? This is all gonna be default. Don't need any of these, don't need any of these. NTP should default. I'll take all the defaults for everything so far. Oops, no, I don't want to do that. So, save. Okay, INTI, enable. 192.168.20.64 and save again, take all the defaults, save. Right, so I'm going to go through and do the rest of these as well because it's going to get quite tedious watching me do all these. Uh, that one's already done. Okay, so that's all the rules. Uh, sorry, that's all the uh, DHCP server set up. So if I connect something to these networks, they should all get an IP address. And the last thing to do is to define rules for these so they can work. Um, now I'm just going to do these one at a time. So the first one I'm doing is IoT inbound. So currently no rules for this interface, so let's add one. Action pass. So we need to let the Plex server access to the internet. So I'm actually not fast. Um So let's allow traffic out. Save. So there's that one there. Now, what I don't want to do is allow this to access anything else. So I'm going to add a role which says block. And the interface is going to be. If someone has come to match this role. So I'm going to say IP4 and IP6, anything, source, don't mind, destination. I'm going to say network. No. Right, here we go. So this can't access GMZ network. So this says, right, anything, any protocol, IP4 or 6, no matter where it comes from, if it's going to the GMZ network, it gets blocked. So I need to replicate this. And uh, IoT. Oh. Save. So that's now blocking any access to the IoT output network, outward network rather. Copy and DMZ. 
im Set Network. Okay. Right. So I've now got a rule at the top that says if anyone on this network tries to access any of these networks, they get blocked. And let's just change the order of these a bit. Well, that's one I want. Right, so those these top three are the three original networks. And let's put these in order. So LAN is going to go there. ITO LAN. So I need to block access to the original network. I need to have another one here. Save. Copy this one. Block. And LAN one net. There we go. Okay, so here's the three original core networks interfaces that we have. And then these are all the new ones that I've just added, all being blocked. So anything that's on this IoT inbound cannot access any of the other networks. I don't know why. It's the Plex server. I don't want it to be able to access or reach out to any of the other networks. So let's apply changes. And it's probably going to be the same for almost all the other networks. Um, apart from the LAN, probably, and maybe the IoT outward network, which I might want to allow to have access to the cameras, perhaps. Um, the, obviously, the backup network is going to get access to everything. Um, right, so that's that done. Now, um, the second job was to move the Plex server. And let's go and do that now. So the next thing we've got to do is move these connections from the PFSense firewall to their correct locations. Now, I've been and unplugged uh, this cable. So that's ready to, to go. So at the moment, none of these devices are accessible because this, this cable has been unplugged. So that's going to have to go into this slot here so this one is staying where it is and this one is moving uh, into that slot from here up to there so i'm on the um smart switch here so let's go to vlan control and so we've currently got port uh, VLAN 2 allocated to all of these ports along here and VLAN 1 allocated to here. So what we need to do is add a new VLAN, which is going to be VLAN 20. And that is going to sit here, port 3 is that top one and then we're going to have the pf uh, the plex server is going to be on port 20. now that doesn't know it's on a vlan so that's going to be untagged this one is going to be talking to the pf sensor which does know about a vlan so this one's going to be tagged so let's apply that and because we've got port 20 untagged going to have to go down to the PVID and change this one to 20 and apply. Now, the other thing, because I've moved that cable up to here, but I still want to keep those other devices working, I'm going to remove port 3 from VLAN 1. So I'm going to apply that. 
So we've got the port, default port ID. Okay, so let's go in. So let's add it here. So that'll be untagged. And we'll move that one. We'll leave that one where it is. So we're now going to add port VLAN 3. Uh, port 3 onto VLAN 2. Okay. And now we go through and do the PVID. And we're changing this one. Port 3, the default is going to be 2. And apply. So if we come down here to the summary now, we can see here we've now got Okay, we need to remove that one from port three. That's the advantage of having the summary section. We now need to remove this one from port from VLAN one. Let's go back to status again. Okay. So now port three is still on VLAN two, untagged. So all the untagged traffic is still going to be able to get to it. But the tagged VLAN 20 traffic is also going to travel up port 3. And the untagged VLAN 20 is going to be here on port 20. So we also need to remove this one from VLAN 3 because we've finished with this one now as well. Let's go back to VLAN. This is the spare VLAN that wasn't doing anything but... Let's tidy it up and remove that. Okay. So there we go. So port three, we've got VLAN two untagged and we've got VLAN 20 tagged. And then coming across here, port 20, we've just got VLAN 20, VLAN 20 untagged. So I can now go and re-plug in those two cables for the future state. So I'm going to be plugging this cable in here. And I'm going to be plugging the Plex server in here, into port 20. Right. The next thing we need to do is I'd like to have a pre-allocated IP address for the Plex server as it's uh, a fixed device. So let's go and add that. So on the Plex server, IoT inbound, uh, no, services, go to the FCP server, IoT inbound, scroll down and add a mapping in. That's the MAC address, hostname is Plex. Plex server, Everything else should be static, apart from okay. dot two one. Let's call that. Okay, and save. And apply changes. Right now, I need to go and plug in the Plex server, and hopefully, it should request. An IP address. Okay, so now I've re-attached uh, the Plex server and rebooted it. So let's just check what we've got. So let's go status DHCP leases. And what do we have? Nothing there. Nothing there. 192.168.20 Right, there we go. 192.168.20.201 Raspberry Pi, which is running my Plex server, and Plex, and Plex server. Online, static. So, that's it for stage one. So, 
again if you've enjoyed that please like and subscribe and uh, you'll get notified when step two comes through thanks bye